Real terrific elements are talking about. Welcome back to the Nutri Medical Report. And of course, first hour on Wednesdays, we have Harley Schlanger, one of the other amazing guests from the LaRouche Foundation. And there's a number of extremely important pressing points. As we talked about before the break, we need a Nixon moment with Obama. Well, and this is really critical because what just look at the last couple of days what's happened. You have Obama and the British sabotaging the Geneva II conference to try and resolve the situation in Syria. You have an outbreak of violence in Ukraine, which is not coming from the normal dissident networks. It's coming from hardcore pro-Nazi fascists with full support from the State Department and the George Soros network. You have bombings in Thailand. You have bombings in the Shia section of Lebanon. And now what's really interesting, and I think we have to flesh this out a little bit on, on the program, is that as you and I have been talking, the Saudis have been behind much of the global terrorism. And now, yesterday, Putin said, according to Press TV, Putin said, if there's violence in Sochi, we're coming after the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And immediately, there was a, a pullback in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Bandar is now reported, and Prince Bandar is the head of Saudi intelligence and the, the leading, the linchpin of the pro-terror networks in Saudi Arabia. He suddenly disappeared from Saudi Arabia. He may be in a hospital in the United States. I don't know, maybe they're going to do a sex change on him or something. Well, I can tell you that uh, the comments that happened last fall between uh, Putin and uh, King Abdullah, which you otherwise know as Prince Bandar, these guys really have tweaked the Russians, and you don't do that. And uh, the Russians, when they say they're going to turn your cities into glass, you have to take it to the bank, they will. Well, and the Russians are serious about protecting the Olympics game in an extremely important event yesterday. You know, you and I talk a lot about the U.S. military engaging in war avoidance measures, including on Syria. Well, yesterday, General Dempsey met with General Gerasimov, his counterpart in Russia. They met in Brussels. And Dempsey promised the Russians uh, uh, anti-terror weapons, including the things we've developed to counter the effects of the IED explosives, uh, other kinds of equipment, uh, personnel to collaborate with the Russians. The Russians said they were very grateful for this because they're on a, a high-level alert right now. The Olympics begin in a couple of weeks, and the Saudis had been moving aggressively to bring terrorists into Sochi before the Russians clamp down what Putin's calling an iron wall. Well, this embarrassment is going to one that's going to backfire in Saudi Arabia. And it also is going to backfire in the insane, sabotaged, Satanistic state of Israel. Because Israel is out of control. They want to work with Saudi to smash Iran, which will guarantee, if we don't have a peace treaty this year, we're going to have a thermonuclear war in the Middle East. Right now. Well, and the, the, the faction in Israel, uh, I, I would just like to say there are very many, very clearly good people in oh, the yeah, Israeli people, military the people, and intelligence. The people, the people that are, are in the uh, relievers of control, though, are crazy. L well, Lieberman Netanyahu, and, and, yes, Netanyahu and, and, and is crazy. But there's some good people like Zippy Livni and others that are kind of like, they're in shock over what's going on. Well, they're trying to get out of this. But look, here's, here's really the interesting thing. Uh, as the Israelis are escalating their rhetoric and the Saudis escalating their rhetoric against Iran, Iran two days ago let the international atomic energy uh, officials, investigators, into their previously sealed facilities and showed that they had shut down the production of enriching uranium at 20 percent. The Iranians are serious about trying to make a shift. Even British former Defense Minister Jack Straw, who was in Iran last week, said there is a genuine sense that Iran is, is changing. Now, this doesn't fit in with the playbook of Netanyahu and the Saudis. Right. And so this is where the war danger comes from. And I, well, I just want to make this point before we go any further. Yeah. You and I have discussed this. There is a real danger of nuclear war. That's not hyperbole. That's not exaggeration yeah. or, or bull. There's a real threat, and it comes from an insane faction, which will not give up its intent 
to destroy any nation which goes against this collapsing transatlantic system. And they're yeah. using their attack dogs in the, the right-wing Zionists in Israel and the crazy Wahhabites in the Saudi Arabian yeah, the, government. There's a third part of the triangle. It's uh, uh, Abe of Japan, who belongs to the Ushirikyo right. death cult. And as Japan collapses, because I expect in the next three to six months a evacuation of Tokyo as radiation sickness becomes acute. Uh, when that happens, you'll see the collapse of the Japanese economy, which is just barely behind the Chinese, and the, Ch uh, the, and the Chinese is just barely behind the U.S. in terms of total uh, dollar, the uh, GDP. What's going to happen is we have a saber rattling in the South China Sea of an island 400 miles from the Chinese coast, and the Chinese are threatening to take an island in the Philippines. Uh, this is all tied back to, to Fukushima. Uh, basically, Fukushima is telling us we have to stop all nuclear reactors that are old-style generation technology and replace them with newer technology that's safe, that doesn't go hot when you lose backup power, that doesn't vent off tritium and other radioisotopes. And these newer and technologies are set to go. These newer technologies are ready to go. Right, and the thing they're, is they're that being uh, suppressed. Even, ultimately we're, we, we need to move toward nuclear fusion, which by the way is tier one science. We've had it for 50 years, but they don't want it out. <clears throat> the problem is that just like when we talked to Professor McCanny, this situation right now is so critical because the world economic system is b bursting. The, Jap the Chinese economy, they've printed so much money now that they're having inflation 8 to 10% uh, in real estate every month in their major cities. And, uh, and food prices are going skyrocketing. Now, if Japan goes, the amount of radiation doesn't just go you know, from west to east. It also cyclonically heads over China within three weeks. 22 provinces detected high levels of radiation over China. So the people of, of East Asia are at extremely high risk of developing major radiation sickness as well. But, Bill, let me, let me go back to something though that you said before we lose this trend, which I think is important. Right. Uh, the Nixon moment for the United States. Yeah, you know, exactly. Up to this point, you know, you look at the Saudis and, and the Israelis and you look at Abe, what do they all have in common? They're all marching under the orders of the what LaRouche calls the Anglo-Saudi or Anglo-Dutch Empire. Now, right. the most important figure in that Anglo-Dutch Empire is Barack Obama. And the idea of a Nixon moment is that, look, just as Democrats couldn't bring down Nixon, it was the Republicans who had to do it, and Senator Howard Baker was sort of designated to go in and tell Nixon he'd better leave before he gets impeached. Up to this point, the Democrats have been terrified to get rid of Obama. Many of them are moving away from him. They're telling him not to come and campaign for them. But up to this point, the Democratic liberals, progressives, have still defended Obama. We're now seeing a shift around two things. One is the NSA scandal where Obama last week basically lied that he's going to do something about it. And secondly, Nat Hentoff, a senior civil libertarian, long-term card-carrying leftist, used to be a columnist for 40 years for the Village Voice. He came out this week and said, Obama is the worst president we've ever had, and he must be impeached. If we can open the door to get Democrats now to say that Obama will be gone in a minute, and he yeah, has I think to that, be that, that that event is the most significant in the last uh, six years of politics in America. When that hint off, and I read the article uh, late last night after you put it out, and we're talking about someone who knows this man is toxic to the Democratic Party. He's toxic to what I call people first, America first, and the Constitution. And he's toxic to the Constitution. Yeah. Hentoff is a right. civil liberties attorney right. who right. said that Obama does not believe in the Constitution as evidenced by his total disregard for the balance, checks and balances system. Exactly. And what that means, basically, it's not just if you have a giant empire like America, the British Empire, and you have the a maniac at the helm who now is a functionally dictator uh, who says I have a pen and I have a phone you have a really big problem you have he a should use the pen to sign a resignation letter that's the next bit of ink he should be using back, back in a moment
Welcome back, and uh, Hardy, let's continue with the sex, second uh, topic issue. Uh, we're in a very dangerous time. This is far more dangerous than the time that started right before World War I or II. This is more dangerous than any other time in history because we have environmental catastrophe as a Fukushima and the Makondo drill site, which is never allowed to loop current to come back. We have the economic uh, nexus happening in the next perhaps as little as few months, up to a year and a half, where we know that the banking system is ready to rip. It's almost like you can hear the almost the sound before the pop of the economy. And uh, so let's go over some of these details. Well, let's start with the, the big picture, because this is what people don't understand. And this is the unique view of Lyndon LaRouche. His view is that from the assassination of Lincoln, but especially from the removal of Bismarck in 1890, the British Empire has been on a course of destruction of sovereign states. Their target in the First World War and then the Second World War was Germany and Russia. Uh, they did not want cooperation in Central Europe because that would have defeated the control of the global trade and monetary system by the British. But the casualty, I mean, the, and so what LaRouche is saying is that there's been one continuous imperial policy which has led to two world wars, but numerous smaller wars. For example, in the mid-1890s, you had Japan attack China and Korea. You had, after World War II, you had the Korean War, the Vietnam War, the so-called War on Terrorism, which is seemingly an endless war. If you look at all of this as one war, what's the issue? The issue is the intent of the global financial elite, who are now meeting in Davos, Switzerland, by the way. This elite intends to destroy any nation which would get in the way of their global imperial policy. Exactly. And that policy is to sustain the control over raw materials, over food, over uh, insurance and pharmaceuticals, and especially over banking. Now, as this system broke down in the, the late 20s, the British American policy, and by the Americans, I mean people like Harriman and Bush family, the uh, Prescott Bush, the father of George H.W. and the grandfather of George W., they funded Hitler because they could not allow a sovereign Germany to develop a sovereign economy. And they intended Hitler to march east. And Hitler and his generals decided instead to march west, at which point the British came running to Franklin Roosevelt saying, save us, save us. And Roosevelt said to Churchill repeatedly, we'll save you this time, but never again will we go to war on behalf of British imperial interests. And Roosevelt intended the post-war period to be a period of decolonization and the development of the poorer countries of the world, including Russia and China. Now, after Roosevelt's death, Truman was stampeded by Churchill and the British into this idea of dividing the world into two empires. And the Cold War was really a battle between these two empires with the United States, the military might to back up the British uh, Empire. Now, since the collapse of the Soviet Union, the Russians and the Chinese and others have been trying to come out from under this imperial system. And in the last couple of years, they've made enormous progress. The problem is that we in the United States have had two overlords, W. Bush and Obama, neither of whom are particularly bright, but both of whom are mean and nasty, who are functioning as operatives of this British system. Now, the question in, in front of us is will these bad leaders take us to war? And this is why it's so important for us to point to what General Dempsey is doing, what former Defense Secretary Bob Gates did with his book. Look, a lot of things people are trying to say was Gates pro-Obama, anti-Obama. You know, he said Obama, his hesitancy in Afghanistan turned out to be right. But he said, look what we've had since, since that surge in Afghanistan. The Libyan War, which was what? The U.S. essentially siding with terrorists and al-Qaeda. The, the fiasco in Egypt, where maybe the military can stay in control there, but we brought to power the Muslim Brotherhood terrorists. And then Syria, where Dempsey said to Obama, well, sure, we can go to war if you want, but do you know what's going to happen? Wars never go as planned. 
And civilian leaders like Obama and all his top people don't have any clue what happens under wartime. And so yeah. we are lucky in this country that we have a couple people in the military who are literally countering the civilian utopians who think the military can go in and blow anything up we want and, and it will be a simple question of a victory. Let, let so me that, summarize what you basically said. You said ahead. basically all the wars that we've had in the last 200 years since Napoleonic are economic. And what we have now is a war between economic control systems to make the, the absolute omniscient power of the British uh, American imperial financial system, which is ready to pop. The Chinese system trying to literally uh, get out through all of these shackles, and the BRICS nations have been doing this for some time, but they're not very successful. In fact, China is ready to have a major problem as well. Uh, that's prob partly due to the fact that now that the people in their country want decent wages and the slave mentality is going, and even large companies like Foxconn want to replace most of their workers with robots in the next 10 years robot manufacturing and or they've moved it off to India and Indonesia uh, this saber rattling uh, used to be a thing that that the how can I say they profit from even the danger of impending war by the military industrial intelligence complex but this is too dangerous now it's like playing with matches in a firecracker store or a, 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 a dynamite depot well, it's, it's, as, as John Kennedy said, we have a nuclear sword of Damocles hanging over our head. Yeah. And either we, we find areas of cooperation or we're going to end up with war. And here's where it's so dangerous. You look at the situation in Syria, where now the, the, there was this new study that came out last week that said that it's now definitive evidence that the one rocket shell with sarin gas could not have been fired by Syrian government forces because it was within the, the area where the rebels held the territory. And so, as many people suspected, when Obama said it's ludicrous to assert that the, anyone but the Syrian government did this, Kerry's slam dunk, it was definitely Assad, it now turns out that it wasn't Assad. Well, and actually, yeah, well, it's The Russians even had published information on this. They had their own forensics look at these shells and everything. Exactly. And yet the, the moron-in-chief and, and his, and his well, he must, must be pre-demented. John Kerry. It's unbelievable the behavior of this man. You can even see at times he's bumbling and thinking, this man well, he's going like back, other he, look, He's going back and forth. On the one side, he's an Obama <clears throat> puppet. On the other side, he's trying to maintain credibility with people like Sergei Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister. So one minute he says something relatively sane, like the way he helped with the Russians get us out of going to war with Syria. But at the same time, he was pushing this so-called red line argument that Obama had. Well, it's the same thing that goes on the last few days. They've said, well, uh, in the Syrian discussions now that are going on right now, they cut Iran under the deal to even make the discussions. That's not rational. Well, then they, right? yeah, they kick them out. Sure. I mean, it was crazy. It is. Back in a moment. But it wasn't because I didn't know And uh, just pulling up some of the news uh, from Reuters, Japan-China tensions take center stage with Abe and Davos. And it's amazing uh, the comments that are being made here. But uh, And they're natural enemies. Taiwan, South Korea, and Japan, though, believe it or not, are currently allied. Now, it's the old, it's like... Actually, no, South say. Korea, Dr. D, well, South Korea is talking with China. The South Koreans are very concerned about a Japanese... Uh, military aggression. And well, actually, well, actually, I've got the alternative information that, in fact, the South Koreans have recently, and this is very recent, last few weeks, made a number of meetings with the Japanese, who are their natural enemies. They hate their guts because they literally came into South Korea and took their women and made them into prostitutes for Japanese military. But they see the expansion of China, and China's not doing this because it's smart. They, and people will say, well, they want the oil and the fish from the South China Sea. No, they're doing it because internally China is ready to pop. 
Uh, the, the number of people that are dissatisfied with the central communist government is insane inside but, China. But let me, let me tell you one of the things that, that's happening in, in South Korea, which is that the South Koreans, the, the current president is the daughter of Park Chung-hee, who was the one who opened relations between South Korea and China. And one of the things that the South Koreans are very worried about is precisely this Abe uh, militaristic stance. And as you mentioned, the South Koreans are still demanding that the Japanese re, uh, recognize the rape of, of uh, hundreds of thousands of South Korean women in, in right. World uh, War II. Now, exactly. But here's, yeah. And but also the, the uh, Daoyu Island dispute, which is still between South Korea and Japan. That's there. Yes. But what's happened is with the recent military actions by China trying to seize an island from Japan, and uh, also interfering with even the actions of the South Koreans in the South China Sea, they've taken away territory from South Korea too. So it's not like a one-way deal here. But the here's, South Koreans here's are caught the problem. in a rock and a hard place because they have a, both potential right. allies and enemies in both situations. But here's, and, here's uh, the bigger problem, yeah. Dr. Deagle. South Korea and China could work it out if it were not for Obama's policy. Oh, and yeah. Obama's policy is one that's threatening South Korea, Japan, and China with his Trans-Pacific Partnership. And this is what Obama's trying to fast-track, which will right, eliminate yeah. sovereignty from every nation. And right. so that's and what, why what, the what priority for the, all these countries the, is the getting the Obama South, out. Yeah, the miracle of South Korea is industrial expansion. A lot of it literally uh, fast-tracking, copying, and upgrading technology. That's why if you want to buy a really top-notch cell phone or television or other t high tech electronics you often buy South Korea and what's happening is South Korea's massive expansion they're one of the largest shipbuilders in the world now is because of this miracle the TPP though will hand over not only America but South Korea Japan all these nations to a globalist government of unelected bureaucrats and uh, and what this is a pincer action to squeeze the the blood right out of China and Russia and China and Russia know that that's my this point that the, the impulse toward bad relations in any of these countries comes from the, the imperial control of Obama, who's trying to use the TPP and also a similar trade agreement with Europe to destroy yeah. any nations. Now, that's why, look, this question of, of Nat Hentoff and others is so important. But here's, look, uh, the, what's the vulnerability of this empire? It's their banking system. The banking system is filled with toxic assets. And uh, I'll tell you what came up in, in Europe recently. U.S. Treasury Secretary Jack Lew went to Brussels and met with the EU, the, uh, the European Union, the European Central Bank, and the IMF. And this is the day after the IMF released a report saying that there's indebtedness everywhere, but the indebtedness in the advanced sector in Europe and the United States is the worst it's been in history. And it's not just government debt, it's private sector debt, corporate debt, and family debt. And so what does Jack Lew say, the U.S. Treasury Secretary, Obama's replacement to Tim Geithner? He says the solution is for Europe to print money to match the quantitative easing of the United States. And the reason he said it is the Italian banks need a trillion dollars by the end of this year. The French banks may need as much as 1.8 to 2.6 trillion. The Spanish banks need a trillion. You're talking about just those four countries, Italy, Spain, and France, you're talking about almost $5 trillion, which is the amount of quantitative easing the United States has done in the last three years. But so they're not isolated, say, though. But they're not isolated. What happens is in China in the last five years, they've created more credit by the same printing system as the Fed Reserve of the European Central Bank, the Fed Reserve, the Abe Bank of Japan, and all other countries on Earth. They've created an additional $25 trillion of credit. And 50% of the loans now, business and personal loans in China, are sh loan shark loans. But and they have high, so, so what's going on is not just a, it's a systemic problem in every country, every major leading country, to have this massive explosive debt. And what I think the TTIP and the, T, uh, and the Trans Pacific Partnership are, are they're trying to do is they want to move to a new economic order where the old British. Uh, American imperial banking system, the same ones that go right back to the uh, Venetian system, want to wrestle 
China, put them in a headlock, and Russia and these other countries into this new financial order where every nation has lost sovereignty, including that's, America. That's exactly, that's exactly right. And here's where you get into the war danger coming out of the financial crisis. But I just want to mention a couple of other things, because you have this line out there that Europe's stock market went up 5% last year, while the U.S. stock market went up 25%. So both Europe and the United States are moving toward recovery. This is nonsense. Why, why do you say that? Where, where, where do they get the, 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 the hubris and the, and the cojones? to say such a bold-faced lie when and in Obama they keep on fiddling the statistics on who on unemployment when in fact we now have more people unemployed than actually working there's 108 people that have been long-term unemployed in America compared to 100 well let, let, let me make let, let me make an important point on this because yeah what what they're doing is that they're putting out these lies as they are proceeding with these free trade agreements that intend to crush nations. That's yeah. the real intent of the policy. Right. Now, the, I, I spoke to a very senior European official who had numerous jobs at, as top economic advisor for international banks in Europe. And what he said is that the problem is they have plenty of liquidity. As you're pointing out, there's liquidity sloshing around everywhere. Everywhere. In the big so, banks. And so much in, liquidity. In, in fact, the Chinese are going crazy but, trying but, to me, buy but, up access to firms and, and, and building railways in Tanzania and doing what things he, all over what the world, he said which is, is one good thing. They're building infrastructure and they're building up other nations, like the, 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 uh, all the nuclear reactors being built in Mexico are built by the Chinese, all the Series 100 highways. Uh, a lot of the industrialization and rebuilding of, of of Africa is Chinese money. But Bill, let me let me stick to what this one official said because he's on the inside in Europe. What he said is that the liquidity is not getting into in the West. It's not being loaned to produce anything. No. It's not going into production. He said China is expanding too much, but at least a portion of it is going into physical production. What he said, however, is that the problem with these banks is that because they never wrote down the toxic debt, the collateralized debt obligations, the derivatives, the mortgage-backed securities, because that's never been written off, they have all the liquidity in the world, but they're still insolvent. And all it would take... Yeah would be a trigger against one of these banks where all the other banks would then issue margin calls where you would find the same thing that happened with Lehman Brothers in 2008, but this time with all the big banks globally. And he added that you could do the bail-in, steal the depositors' money, all the depositors' money from all the banks, and it would just be a drop in the bucket compared right. to the outstanding liabilities. It, yeah, it would be a weekend, uh, a weekend of covering the debt in an ocean of, of massive debt that could consume multiple Earths. Right. It's, it's irrational. And uh, I can hear the sound of the pop, because this year an event such as Fukushima reactor uh, cooling pool falling over, a Middle Eastern war, uh, an airborne pandemic, which is now building very quickly across the epidemic last week, any of these could trigger it. Welcome back, and uh, Harley, let's continue with this dialogue. Uh, what we have now is a very dangerous year. I, the, the Chinese call it the year of the horse. It's an, almost like a, I mean, a harmonica of the 1914 time when the optimism of the early 20th century turned to war. And it, it was only seven months after the Federal Reserve uh, Act was passed, which basically technically is over December 24th of 2013, that uh, this is now, the globalists are now on a panic to create war or the conditions to proceed war so that they can create a new economic order. And most people don't realize just the, if you think na the nasty agreement, I call it the NAFTA agreement, which had destroyed the economy of Mexico and created the massive influx of people from Mexico and other countries because it destroyed their economies. The TTIP in Europe and the Trans-Pacific Partnership will not only destroy nations and their massive economic advance of second and third world nations, but it'll destroy us also. And it'll also mean we'll lose sovereignty. We won't be in control of our internet, our communications, our uh, freedom to do almost anything. It'll be really quite horrendous. And it'll be but basically, uh, it'll be a scientific dictatorship of global bankers that are insane that want to reduce the world pop 
population and, and these partnerships aren't to create better trade or more rational trade they're to create total control and wrestle to the ground any new creativity any new expansion in other countries and increase the chances of a nuclear war we're not just talking about like power blackouts caused by war but also the danger of hitting the giant depots literally 50 to 60 years on 500 almost 600 nuclear reactor sites more than anywhere from two one to six reactors at each site around the world that could be dispersed into the air so if even say five reactors in america were hit with nuclear weapons we would have fukushima many times over the world well, will not survive this i mean we're not talking know, about can... something that's we're not talking about a nuclear winter like with uh uh, you know, the, the, the Boston astrophysicist who's now dead, I think it's like, uh, what's his name? Sounds like Shouch. Anyway, uh, he used to be on a lot of these channels, uh, the channels, the the learning channels, et cetera, years ago. We're dealing with something where if we don't turn this around, mankind's not going to survive the decade. Well, you can go to our website, com and see a video documentary called Unsurvivable, which just talks about the effects of nuclear war, what would happen if you unleash submarine warfare, which would be the first phase of this. But here's the, the, the other point. I mean, what we're doing is we're building for this Nixon moment. We're using the Senate campaign in Texas of a Democrat, Keisha Rogers, to right. change the dialogue in politics away from silly, stupid social issues, which everyone gets all worked up about, to actually talking about what you and I have been discussing. How you take the power away from an elite which has proven for 150 years incapable of anything except creating poverty, death, and war. You know, the, the reason LaRouche emphasizes this broader sweep of history is that what has characterized the sweep is that while there have been efforts made by individual nations to escape the power of this colonial system, you know, people like Nkrumah in Africa, uh, the, the uh, Gandhi and Nehru in, in India, there have been efforts to break away from this, but they've constantly been frustrated by the overall power of this empire which now is ruling in part through the presence of a, another British puppet in the United States, o Obama following Bush. And so you have this consistent consistency that you've pointed out in these trade agreements and everything else. But they're not that bright. They're attempting to do this using institutions that have, in a sense, are brain dead, like the banks. And yeah, that's why well, Glass-Steagall well, represents such a threat to them. There was a hearing last week in the Congress on banks owning commodities, and in the middle of it, Elizabeth Warren raised an interesting question. Would they be able to do this, that is, uh, manipulate prices up and down by banks owning the commodities, would they be able to do it if Glass-Steagall were in effect? And they said no. And she said, see, that's why they're so afraid of this bill because they want to keep doing this using control over electricity, over aluminum, over everything. So right. if we can but get it's also driving people, down the price of food. For example, a lot of the Arab exactly. Spring wasn't caused by... The Arab Spring was caused by the food prices spiking because instead of historical 10% was, uh, was controlled by international investing by the bankers. It has risen now to over 40%. Is now speculated bankers and derivatives markets manipulating the price of food right out of people's mouths so they're starving. And this is what drove people. For example, we had reports talking about this in Libya where uh, people who had a master's degree in, in an advanced science went back home to run a, a, a fruit and, and vegetable cart uh, in, uh, in Libya. And uh, they couldn't because they couldn't afford the actual basic materials, the foods, to resell to people in the street. So what no, we have that's, situation. Why, that, yeah. that's why if you defeat, if you want to change this, we've got to defeat these trade agreements, but the best way to do it is to get Obama out yeah, and get yeah. Glass-Steagall in. So, and that's so what actually, I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you the, because I'm a surgeon, I'll give you the surgical procedure uh, in kind of political terms for the abominectomy. Now what we do is we drape the entire White House with a surgical drape. And then what we do is we, we, we kind of poke around till we can identify that there is a, a tall, skinny, uh, half black, half white man. And then what we do is we, we, we start removing the umbilicus 
of him attached to George Soros and the strings that are attached to the bankers. That's the first stage of it, and that is the Glass-Steagall Act. The second act is, this, is the act of impeachment. Mr. Boehner has been getting unbelievable amounts of Twitter and Facebook uh, negative contacts because he refuses to start the procedure. He needs to know this is a good time to do it. This is a time where they'll build uh, momentum toward a midterm change, but we want to have, whether it's Democrats or Republicans, we want to have America first. That's well, why I'm supporting she, De but, Keisha Rogers as a Democrat, right. because she wants to fix the problem. I don't care what party they belong to. I'm a political agnostic. If they want to do the right thing, and that includes even some of the Tea Partiers that actually have half a clue and are decent. The no, ones this, should be, fascism, this should be a bipartisan mobilization exactly, to yes, yes. Obama as someone who's violated his constitution constitutional oath repeatedly. And I, right. I want to give a phone number if people want to know what they can do to, to link up with Keisha's campaign and help us do this. Because if we could have a Democratic victory in the U.S. Senate race in Texas on March 4th in the primary of Keisha Rogers, this will right. send a signal to the whole country that we're not going to do this banker's game anymore. So people can call our office in Houston and ask to talk to me or Keisha at 800 922-2907 and we'll give you the road map to this victory so it's 800-922-2907 on how to bankrupt Wall Street in the city of London and get Obama out of office 800-922-2907 yeah. call yeah. us without delay well you know the, you, the LaRouche Foundation Virtually, if you're a marksman and your organization were marksmen, you'd receive top honors at the Olympics in shooting. And the reason is that uh, when they called it over the issue of uh, bilateral collaboration between the Russian and American military, over the insistence by, uh, by civilian maniacs that want to push for war, it's a good thing in terms of dealing with terrorism at the Sochi Olympics. They can't even sell tickets now. This is ridiculous. Why is this being allowed? Why are we tolerating this? Why are we inflaming the situation and even putting in money well, and to support Al-Qaeda to do regime change in Syria where we actually pay money for, for Al-Qaeda to do regime change in Syria? At the same time, we're saying, well, we don't like Al-Qaeda attacking Fallujah and Najaf, so we won't put military in there, but we're going to support the... The uh, local now military and police. In but you Iraq. know, when when you talk about when you talk about marksmanship, the good hunter knows that when you have when you're shooting at ducks, get the lead duck, and the lead duck in this thing is the Saudi Arabian deployment under the British in collaboration with Obama. So by yeah. impeaching Obama and focusing on the Saudis, maybe we'll be able to not just save the Olympics but save the human race. Yeah. Absolutely. Important show today. Thank you, Harley. Remarkable updates. And, of course, check out the LaRouchePAC.com, LaRouchePUB.com. Regularly lots of video clips and amazing articles. Um, I'm very impressed, Harley. That's a very important stories and analysis today. People need to take it to heart. And uh, literally, besides their political action, they need to start praying, too. This is a very dangerous time. All right. We'll talk next week. Thank you, Harley Schlanger. Coming up, hour number two, our health and wellness hour. And then we're going to have uh, a major updates in terms of what's going on with Tex Mars. His latest book is quite remarkable, uh, The DNA Science and the Jewish Bloodline. And this will explain a lot. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs>